as the Lord lives before whom I stand. For as long as Jesus is the one commanding your destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck you from his hand. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. This is now your Sunday service. You are getting your morning service in the morning. And then you come back in the evening for your evening service. In the name of Jesus. From the depth of my heart. I'm so grateful to God to witness this day. Yeah. Hear me loud and clear. Every area of your life where you hurt and ache and say, when will it be? You're getting the answer in 2023. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. It's going to turn around things for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me start this New Year message by reading again the two specially selected texts of scriptures read earlier by the deputy serving overseer. If you don't mind, please turn your Bible with me to Psalm 30, verse 1 to 12. And then I'll read Psalm 126. 1 to 6. My Psalm 126, 1 to 6 will be in KJV. The first one will be in the New King James Version. Psalm 30, 1 to 12. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. How many of you know there are those waiting patiently? He has always spoken about Project 16. He's so confident. He's so bold. We are going to see. Well, we'll compare notes when I'm sworn in in May 29. Can it happen? Wait and see. How will it happen? None of your business. All I know is it will happen because his word will not return to him void. I don't pray for anybody to die, God is my heart. I don't pray for anybody to collapse. All I know is God said it, that settles it. If you get in the way of a moving train, you have yourself to blame. Can I hear amen? Amen. He has lifted me up and he will not allow my enemy to rejoice over me. It doesn't matter if you join the enemy against me. I will wish you well. I will say to Judas Iscariot, that which you are doing. Do it quickly. Verse number two. Oh Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Oh Lord, you brought my soul out from the grave. You have kept me alive. That I should not go down to the pit. Go on. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord, I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the doors praise you? Will he declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my morning into dancing. 
You have put on my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you for some days. Your life will bring forth praise to God forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 126 verse 1 to 6 in the King James Version of the Bible. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them the dream. Then, what, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for CJCC. The Lord has done great things for us. We are all, we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O oh Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goes forth and weeps, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And the people said, Amen. These two Psalms show clearly that God specializes in turning things around for his people. I will dwell more emphatically on it on Sunday during the Thanksgiving service. God specializes in turning things around for his people, but it will first start by turning their life around. I want to assure you that it's not some daydreaming or fantasizing. 2023 is our creative and turnaround year. It will happen to you. It will happen to your family. It will also happen to our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. I wish I can tell Pastor Ike to come and see. Because when he stood here, he said, our celebration song will be this. I want to show you that you are in the spirit. Here it is. Our celebration song for the turnaround that will occur with bewildering rapidity this year, beginning in this first month of January, will be, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. <laughs> What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Sing it with me. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what. attentively as we dig especially into Psalm 31 to 12 to bring to your attention some of the prophetic goodies that the year 2023 has in store. The title of this psalm is very instructive and at the same time very inspiring. The title reads, The Blessedness of Answered Prayer. Just one. The Blessedness of Answered Prayer. A psalm, a song, where are the dedication of the house of David. He was 30 years old. And he became king over Israel. And when his house was built, he wrote Psalm 30 as a song to dedicate 
the house. In verse number one, of Psalm 30, <laughs> I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. Be honest with me. Don't live in denial and don't turn a lie. Does it make sense for me to be opening my big mouth wide to be talking about Project 16 <laughs> after primary, after flag bearers have been appointed, after they have selected the running mate, after the campaign will start on January 4? Is either I am crazy or they don't know what is happening to them. <laughs> to start from April 10, 1967, to carry this on, tell everyone who cared to listen, sat my wife down before I proposed, and told her that the day is coming when you'll be first lady and I'll be president, because my destiny is intertwined with that of Nigeria at a critical moment that he showed me to turn the tide of this nation. It doesn't matter. Throw the coin up. Ed, we win. Tail, they lose. Kosanito <laughs> le daduro. Kosanito le daduro. Eru alaru ba mi, eru alaru ba mi o. Om to ba ti pe no la pore, o se ni to le la duro. E ko se ni to le da duro, o se ni to le da duro. E ko se ni to le da duro, o se ni to le da duro. Eru alaru. Kay came to my office a few days ago. We were talking about the trustees of true riches. And he opened his note. He said, Pastor, when you met with us several years ago about trustees of true riches, the first thing you taught us, told us about was Project 16. I am not a lunatic, and you are going to find out. Agrippa, look at Paul. The Paul, Paul, too much learning has made you mad. He said, King, I am not mad. I'm speaking the word of reason and truth. Be seated. In 2023, everyone under the sound of my voice, if you line up with God's plan and purpose, he will turn your money into dancing. Amen. He will turn your sadness into gladness. Amen. He will turn your tears into laughter. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> and that day of primary, they were calling my name and mentioning zero and repeating it three times all day. Attendees who are supposed to get my return. One ran to toilet, the other ran away. Nobody stood there. They were laughing at me. But hear the word of the Lord. By May 29, I will have the last laugh. Amen. As we just read, this psalm was composed as a song that they sang at the dedication of the house of David. Does it not surprise you that Saul had a palace because he ruled Israel for 40 years? 
And David refused to pass one night in the palace. He gave everything that belonged to Saul to Mephibosheth. He refused to take their family's land or house. He trusted God to build him a house. May I please show you while he wrote this psalm and said, you did not allow my enemies to rejoice over my soul. It was not anyone in Israel that built this house for, Saul, for David. God had to raise a foreign king to come with the masons and everyone to build him a house of cedar. He was a king of Tyre, the capital city of world market that came to Israel to build this house for King David. First Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. First Chronicles 14, 1 and 2. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and cedar trees with masons and carpenters to build him a house. If you read this in the next verse, in King James Version, it says, and David perceived. Give me in KJV, because he said David knew. This one is perception. He looked everywhere. He thought. He did not beg Hiram. <laughs> there was no contract signed. Hear me, in 2023, houses you have not built, vineyards you have not dug, wells you have not dug, vineyards you have not planted, God Almighty we give them to you. I'm keeping the rest. Because in the next two weeks or so, everything you call primary will become secondary. <laughs> and David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel for his kingdom was lifted up on high because of David's family. You must be out of your mind to think this hour that I died to those things that were attractive. I refused to touch them. I said no to them because I am hungry. I'm in this for what I can get. May that day never come. David perceived that God had exalted his kingdom on high for the sake of his people. On January 15, I will stand here again. And present to you the bridge between politics and governance. And you will see that all these people running up and down get it at all costs. It's not a la carte. You must catch it. It is yours. It's not, you must get it by hook or crook. They don't care a hoot about governance. They don't even understand it. All they understand is politics. What kind of a turnaround do you think God did for David? A man who became a fugitive, whose father and mother were relocated to a foreign land, a captain of the distressed, the discontent, and those who are in debt, whose address was in the cave of Adullam. Among other hideouts, what kind of turnaround did God do for David that made him write this poem? He said, number one, you did not allow my enemy to rejoice over me. In the name of Jesus, your enemies will not rejoice over you. Yeah. How do you explain the transition, the trajectory, from the cave into a palace of cedar, except by the grace of God. The house that was built for David 
was not only inspiring, it ignited him to begin to think of generosity towards God. The moment the house was dedicated and he moved into the house, he stood one night. He said, wait a minute. Go call me Prophet Nathan. How can I be sleeping in the house of Sheda? And the ark of the covenant of God of Israel is between ten tents. I will build God a house. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 7. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house. And the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around. That the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent cottages. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. <laughs> I want you to know one thing and settle it this morning, first day of the year 2023, that the way you respond to God is the way God responds to you. That's it. When David said, I will build God a house, he didn't have the materials so to do. Please take your time to read 2 Samuel chapter 7, 2 Samuel chapter 8, but the way you respond to God is the way God responds to you. The moment he became generous toward God and said, I will build God a house, God told Nathan, go back to him and tell him he's not going to build me a house. His son will build me a house instead. But before his son will build me a house, I'm going to build David an enduring dynasty. There will always be someone on the throne from his loin forever. Because he desired to build me a house, I will in turn build him an enduring dynasty. And by the time you realize it, God made him a captain over the nations of the earth. Conquest after conquest and conquest after conquest. The whole of chapter 8, war broke out everywhere. He conquered them. He got so much resources. And the Bible says he dedicated them for the building of the house. When you desire to be rich towards God, it will open resources of heaven and cause you to be so stupendously wealthy that you become a kingdom financial pillar, you'll be wondering what to do next for God. Hmm. I want you to please listen to David's trajectory and the six levels of the types of turnaround that he received from God as stated in Psalm 30, 1 to 12. I'll take the first one. Verse 1. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. Somebody, you will receive this this hour. Wherever you may be right now in the world, online or in this sanctuary, God will lift you up above your enemies. None of them will rejoice over you in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the starting point of your turnaround. Those who are waiting to laugh at you, you will end up laughing at them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, he was saved from a near death situation and healed from a devastating illness. Psalm 32 to 3. Psalm 30, verses 2 and 3. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you, and you healed me. Oh, Lord, you brought my soul off from the grave. That was a terminal disease. You have kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Everyone with a death sentence on your life because of sickness and disease, I decree, declare, prophesy, your appointment with death is canceled. God will turn around your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not going to end up in the pit. You are going to praise his holy name. Your appointment with death is canceled in the name of Jesus. 
you have a house of cedar waiting for you to dwell in, you are not going to end up in the grave in Jesus' mighty name. Third, turn around. Proverbs, I mean, Psalm 30, verse number 3. By the time God dealt with David, he gave him such a triumphant joy that all the years of suffering, all the years of living in the cave, in the wilderness, all the years of running from Saul, Saul had no other job. He gathered men to track him everywhere. He followed him to Keilah. He said he was now in a French city. I will catch him. God made a way of escape for David every time. By the time he put every sorrow, every pain, every tear that he had been crying, by the time he put it together, he said, do you know what? It's only one night. I'm not sure you are hearing me. I'm giving you prophetic interpretation. He said, tears may tarry for the night. All my suffering is just one night. It has expiry date. Psalm 30 verses 4 and 5. By the time triumphant joy hit the heart of David. He said, all the years of sorrow is one night. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Why? For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may, not will, may, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God is going to turn your tears into joy in the name of Jesus. It will be a triumphant joy in Jesus' mighty name. And when that joy comes, you will not remember your days of sorrow. They will long flee away. He ascribed both to God's favor. God forbid that that day comes and you think you are smarter. You think it's your prayer. You'll be so foolish to think you know how to do jack. Adonijah invited everybody to his coronation. He bought chariots. Let me not call one of my money. 
Il est mo wa ti mo gbo kiki Jesus baba Couldn't even bring the money out. Which bank will take it from them? Solomon had no chariot. Solomon had no horses. Solomon had no chest of war. Solomon was sitting at home when they came to call him. Come, 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 come. Say, Solomon, we just heard from the king. We can't see your mule, we can't see your donkey. But your father said you must ride on his mule Hallelujah. to give him where you'll be anointed. Hallelujah. Which like unto the <laughs> Source of his strength and prosperity, he ascribed both to God's favor. In Psalm 36 and 7, listen to him. Psalm 36 and 7. Now, in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Why? Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountains turn strong. You hid your face, I was troubled. Do you know that David so much loved God that when Absalom attacked him, took the palace, took the throne, took the crown, and David was walking barefoot on the rock, and Shimei was cursing and throwing stones at him, David had only one prayer, just one. Lord, they've taken the crown. It doesn't matter. They've taken the throne. It doesn't matter. They've taken the palace. It doesn't matter. Absalom had violated all the women left behind. It doesn't matter. I ask you for one thing. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Stand to your feet and prioritize God in 2023. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. It does not matter what they take away from me. They can turn primary into secondary, turn it into tertiary. They can buy the delegates and buy even candidates. It doesn't matter who steps down for who. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me so that I will never step down for wickedness and for the unrighteous who continue to step up for you. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me in the mighty name. 
of Jesus. Number five. David highlighted what happened when God hides from him. He quickly cried out for the mercy of God because God was his helper. Psalm 30 verse 7 to 10. Psalm 30 7 to 10. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? I say to you today, are you in any serious trouble? I want you to cry to God for his mercy. He is a very present help in time of need. I pray that God will not hide his face from you. He will not take his mercy away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever you are, lift up your hands to heaven and say a good amen as I bless you this day. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace from the beginning of the year till the end of the year in the mighty name of Jesus. Please be seated. Finally, David's turn around took him far away from the firing range of the enemy. No one could silence his praise or his thanksgiving. By the time God finished with David, he had turned his sorrow into joy, his money into dancing, his sadness into gladness, and no man could take away his joy. If the enemy cannot steal your praise, if the enemy cannot steal your peace, if the enemy cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your good. It doesn't matter what happened in this year. You are going to praise God. You are going to be joyful in his presence. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and guide your heart. In the name of Jesus. No circumstance in 2023. No situation. No person will silence your praise. No one will steal the thunder of your thanksgiving. Your testimony will scream louder than your voice. In the mighty name of Jesus. As I bring this message to a close, let me share with you a much more direct and an almost instant creative turnaround in the finances of both the vulnerable and the mighty. I'm not sure you understand that. Sit down. I'm going to focus on three major miracles that took place in the ministry of Elisha. And every one of such miracles was by a creative word. God is going to fill your mouth when I say our creative year, they think I'm talking about creativity, uh, entertainment. Well, God will visit them also, okay? But I'm talking much more seriously about the word God will put in your mouth to declare. Amen. The things others are looking for will look for you. Amen. If he created you in his image and after his likeness and he's a creator, you have those creative dimensions that you have not used up till now. But you are going to open your mouth and talk, and it will happen. Amen. Listen, this is not pride. I spoke Citadel into existence. Yes, you were there. Yes, you heard. Yes, I spoke it into existence repeatedly until it's standing. Therefore, I speak the new Nigeria into existence. Yes. No one will stop it in the name of Jesus. The lamp of the wicked will be quenched. Yeah. Righteous men will come to the mountain. Yeah. All pigs will drown. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Let me quickly focus on those three. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the first 
creative miracle that took place is about how God miraculously helps people to be released from debt. You remember the woman that was the, son, the wife of one of the sons of the prophet who came to Elijah? Let's read. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. You know, I pity you. Because when this thing hits you, you come back here screaming. Kilo de mi o lesorosa. Koshe sosa. Ah, oroti kresi jesa. Ah, abeg bo. Ani morale elan lo dumi. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. And Elisha said, Ah, Kilamawa Shebai, Uluama John, I remember your husband. Is the son of the prophet. I remember his death. They are coming for your sons. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in the house. You remember this? You remember your miracle? You remember? Many people do not know. You know. And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house. Ah. Oh, but there is a jar. No point. When I was leaving, uh, I can't be jar in the corner. Ah, okay. Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you are coming, you shall shut the door behind you and yourselves. Then pour in it into all those vessels. Elisha, koyeyini. I said a jar. I didn't say oil well. I said there's a jar in the house. And you asked me to go and borrow vessels, empty vessels. Don't borrow a few. I should be pouring from that jar into all the vessels. Number one, the ridiculous will always go before the miraculous. Everyone that was loaning her vessel. We'll consider her foolish. Kill of her fish and name her warrior. Say, she bear, come, because just, just, it's empty. Just loan it to me. I need to borrow it. And he got so many vessels and brought it in. And then began to pour. Ewani, Ewani, number 16, yo, you are. I yang at about 61. He poured, she poured, she poured, she poured, she poured. Ah. On who? On who let that you was I ain't so warm when you. On who let Because God spoke a creative word. Let the waters produce abundantly fish of the sea. The first time you hear the word abundance was when God spoke it. In respect of fish. She kept on pouring, she kept on pouring, she kept on pouring. Bring one, bring. Then he said, Bring one more. He said, It's finished. And the oil stayed. You will pour. Amen. In this year, you will keep on pouring. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It was such a foolish thing to do. Here, go tell anyone that needs to hear. I send you free of charge. I can't see Tokwe Adebayo here. 
That struck me. You were in the living room with me in Abuja. So were you. So was Shola Adesoye. April 14. I said to all of you, I will never take the form of APC. I'm not a gambler. I can't go and give 100 million. I went to the president. Why is it this expensive? He said, the party that fixed it because they are looking for money. I told them I will never buy the form. I went to bed overnight. It was Easter, Sun, Easter, Good Friday. I was coming here for drama. We had to leave Abuja at 6.30. At 2 a.m., I went to the bathroom. I couldn't sleep anymore. Then the Lord came and said to me, Son, I did not go to the cross as God. I did not send an angel to die for man. In order to redeem man, I took the form of a man and I went to the cross. In order to redeem your nation, take the form and leave the rest to me. And I don't think you get it. I won't tell you the rest. I will wait till the inauguration. Does it make sense to you that I did not go to a single governor? Hmm. Nasir Arafai called me more than three times. Kaduna is waiting for you. A had come, B had come. I've told them about you. Come and talk to them. I say, I'm not coming. Hmm. Professor Dead Juma in your state said to me, the whole of Ibadan delegates are waiting for you. Come to Ibadan. I said, meet me in Abuja. When they got to Abuja, he called me, they have arrived. I said, I will see them on the field. You are going to trust your nation with those who buy delegates and who buy candidates. And you think they can take your nation anywhere? God will frustrate the tokens of liars, make the viners mad, and turn the wisdom of their wise men backwards. In the mighty name of Jesus. The reason I did not go to any delegate or governor is because I had empty vessels that I'm pouring oil in. You understand me? And I'm not going to run ahead of God in 2023. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Because when the oil stayed, she went back to Elijah, Elisha and said, Prophet, what you said had happened no. I've come to report. There are no more empty vessels. The oil stayed. Say, okay, are they enough? Say, Go and sell it. And then pay your debt and leave on the rest. In 2023, you went time to rest. Yeah. Lack will not frustrate you. Yeah. Poverty will not torment you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, go sell it and live on the rest. Sir, he did not ask for tight. He did not ask for frost fruit. This is how you become intoxicated with generosity. You have dominant generosity to help others. Not just to consume. That's the vulnerable. Let's go to the mighty. It was just one prophetic creative word. You know, you don't know what this is all about. It does not make sense. You have no structure. Huh? No structure. But all you have is borrowed vessels. Let's leave the vulnerable. Let's go to the mighty. The great woman of Shunem. A wealthy woman living in her own mansion. But her perception saved her. She told her husband, I perceive this is a holy man of God who passes us by. He didn't say he's a bishop. He didn't say he's an apostle. He has watched him so well. He said, uh, uh, 
This is a holy man of God. And he will invite him to come and eat bread. And he will serve any time instead of staying in the motel or buying food. She will cook for him. And he said, well, you know what? I need dominant generosity. Uh, let's build a paint floor. And get a paint floor for this prophet. We'll put a bed there. We'll put a table there. We'll put a lamp there. So that any time he comes here, he can stay there. And the husband said, well, we'll go to Bafeshi. Don't argue with your wife. You are going to live long. I know, sir. Uh, Mrs. B said, um, uh, the children in our, in our church in the house, I'm bringing them home. But some of them are swimming. Of here, come home. At the swimming, no? at the pool. No? At... And she was so happy. And I told her, I know what you are doing. You are rehearsing for empty nest. So that you'll be bringing children and be bringing them in. That's what you are rehearsing for. Okay, well done. But listen to me. Elijah was staying there and had stayed. Go read the story. Called Gehazi. I said, Gehazi, can we read it? He said, this woman had taken good care of us. What can we do for her just to show appreciation? Ah, somebody you are getting appreciation this season. <laughs> Yay! It's coming your way. Yeah. And they called her. She was at the door. And Elisha said, Shall I mention your name to the king or the captain of the guard? If you are truly a holy man of God, everyone from the presidency to the senate to, to Sadowna of Katsina to, must be a phone call away. Because they will call you your eminence. Do a bad if I buy a wallet, it is a contract loan, lately. It's not an empty boast. I was at the presidential dinner for the birthday of the president, and the group managing director of NMPC was there. I said, I said, I said, I will come to Lagos to see you, sir. I said, you don't need to come to Lagos. I come to Abuja. No, no, no. I need to come to Abuja. No, no. Stay. Shall I mention your name to the king or the captain of the guard? She said, prophet, I didn't do anything I did for you to benefit. I live amongst my people. I know those people also. Please don't worry. <laughs> I mean, move and shake her too. And as I said, there's something she liked. Since we have been coming here, me or Andrew she scrabble. Oh, play the tennis. Cause he boji boji or no no No, but cause he game be nobody is crying. She has no child. Creative word. Elijah said, woman. But this time next year. According to the season of life, you will have a son. He's a man of God. Don't deceive me. I mean, you'll be able to the word. Don't deceive me. Do you know gynecology so and so? Do you know professor this and that? They checked everything inside of me. They said nothing can happen there. Elijah did not talk. Once that creative word goes, if there's no tube, it will create two. If there's no womb, it will create womb. It's a creative word. It will repair every damage. If your husband has low palm, sperm count, the spirit of God will quicken his body. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body by the same spirit, he will quicken your mortal bodies in the name of Jesus. All the babies I'll be hearing when, when. 2023 is the season. Ephonus, Ephonus, show you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The woman became pregnant. Had a son. What do you think the husband 
and the wife will be thinking of the ministry of Elijah. God turned barrenness into fruitfulness by creative word. And Elijah was still coming there and then going about his own business. Then the boy grew and followed the father to the farm, had migraine headache, sunstroke, came back home, was on the lap of the mother and he, and he died. And the woman said, no. He she had prepared intensive care unit for that child when she gave a bed to Elijah. Carried the child and put her on that bed and said to the husband, Give me a donkey. I need to go to the prophet. He said, There's no conference. Uh, it's only goes because the only goes conference. The Lord said, Ye, you understand me? He said, Or only goes to Gori or not prophet. For I, need, I need to go. Speed full blast. And Elisha said, Here's the woman of Shunem coming. And the Lord has not revealed it to me. You think I know everything about Project 16? I'm not omniscient, I'm not almighty. I don't know how he would do it. I just know he would do it. Yes, sir. You don't get it. Yes, <laughs> if you know everything, then you become God. I don't know everything, but I'm stupid enough to believe what I know. I know the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. Do you understand? <laughs> Elisha said, yes, I take my staff. Be running to the house and go and lay it on the child. And the woman said, Gaza, I call of many creative words. <laughs> Gaza, I just let you know my need. But he didn't speak the word. I won't let go. I won't let go. I have Jesus. I won't let I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. I have Jesus. I won't let go. As I came, he said, His heart was not right. He was going to become a leper later. His heart, his heart attitude was not right. He was looking for what to get. He was just trying to use God to get things, not that he wanted to serve. He wanted to use the back of Elijah to climb into stardom. Yes, sir. Yeah. Elijah got there, stretched himself. That's what I mean by ministering to others out of all that God has given to you. Stretch himself again, again, and at the seventh time, the child sneezed. And he took the child. It's yours. Thank you for the bed. I'm not coming back again. The job is finished. It is produced resurrection. Thank you. Nice seeing you. You will go home smiling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, there's still one more. Shall I? Yes. Or oh, I shall close here. Yes. You read in Second Kings chapter 4, it says, there was a famine in Samaria. The famine now affected the pulse of the prophet. The sons of the prophet did not have good food to eat, so they gathered vegetables. They cooked it, they ate, but there was poison in the pot. And they cried out, Master, there is poison in the pot. And Elijah said, He said, There is poison there. Take this powder, put it in, and eat. He said, What does that mean? Hear me. I don't care what the enemy has fed you with. You will drink deadly things that will not hurt you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I stand in the office God has kept me. And according to the authority that he has given me. Every cancer patient in the house today or online. Everyone that has what do you call that thing that troubles them in the stomach. Ulcer. In Jesus name dry up. 
In the name of Jesus, dry up. Cancer cells, dry up. Whatever part of the body you are growing, die. In the name of Jesus, you will not die. You will live. You will declare the works of God in Jesus' mighty name. I decree, declare, prophesy, there is no poison in your pot. The Lord will bless your bread. The Lord will bless your water. The Lord will give healing and health and wholeness to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Be seated. That's the preamble. That's the preliminary. That's, the, that's what happened before what happened happened. A man of Shalisha. Baal Shalisha. Now came with first fruits. He was coming to give the prophet just enough food for him. He had no desire to feed many people. He came to give the prophet. And he told by Jackie Coloma, those of you who have identified with me till now, you are going to have the last laugh. Amen. I will see you at the top. Amen. It's impossible to forget your labor of love. You're standing with me when others are mocking. <laughs> When they brought the first fruit to Shal to, from Baal Shalisha, there were hundred sons of the prophets there. Creative word. They come, take this bread and set it before the people and let them eat. For thus said the Lord, they shall eat and they'll be left over. In your household, you will eat. They will be left over. Yeah. You will not scratch the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You will eat. Yeah. They will be left over. Yeah. Hundred people will come. They will be left over. Yeah. More people will come. They will be left over. Yeah. This is the first creative turnaround you are going to experience. It's in the area of your finances. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's in the area of the fruit of the womb. It will turn your barrenness into fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, your debts are canceled. You are walking out of death. As you become intoxicated with love for God and you have dominant generosity towards God, you will eat and have left over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Elisha did not give the woman in debt money. There was something in her house. In, your, in the name of Jesus, what you need for your turnaround is in your house. Yeah. You will now run elter and scatter. Yeah. Let me tell you what's about to happen to you. Hmm? You want to hear it? You are going to negotiate for your own pay. Yeah. They are not just going to say this, what will pay. You say, I'm going. They say, you cannot go. Since you have been here, we have seen what the Lord has done. Negotiate, what do you want? And it will give you ideas. To begin to negotiate. You will negotiate from the position of strength. In the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy has stolen from you is restored back to you. The Bible has a principle of reparation. It says when the thief is caught, it will pay back sevenfold. Everything you have lost will be restored to you sevenfold. And when it happens, give glory and praise to God. Don't turn your back on God. This is the time to focus and prioritize on God because it's a deadly, dangerous year. In the name of Jesus, fear will grip the heart of many. They will die, but you will live and declare the works of God. Stand to your feet. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for creative turnaround. We thank you for what you have begun. We will continue the root of fear in our people. We lay the acts of the word to the root of those trees. We cut them down today, this first day of the year, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And hear me, this is my final word. In any shape and in any form, be here at 6 p.m. I will show you these things called fear so that you understand it fully. It starts as an emotion before the spirit comes and it becomes dominant and grips you, and you can't do anything anymore. Hear me. 
when fear comes knocking at your door, let the faith that you have received from the word of God go answer. In 2023, you are going to feed your faith fat. You will starve your doubt and your fear to death. Fear has torment. It will not torment you. It gives his beloved sleep. You will sleep better. You sleep soundly. Tell your wife or tell your husband, if I'm snoring, don't wake me up. Don't disturb my sleep. You can go to another room. You understand me? It's my season of rest. It's my season of sleeping. You can go into another room. Don't ever tamper with my sleep anymore. He gives his beloved sleep. I'm going to sleep so well and all the neighbor will know I am sleeping. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Stretch your hands towards me and pray. I'll see you at 6 o'clock in the name of Jesus. It's the beginning of a new era, a new day, a new dawn in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, nobody will shall sacred your destiny. No circumstance or situation will cause you to fail. You are walking in triumph everywhere you go. I thank you, Father, for strength in the Holy Ghost. I thank you for strength in the inner man. I thank you for dominant generosity in the year 2023. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people said, Lift your hands to heaven. None of the words spoken will stand against you. Yeah. When you sleep, the word will come to you. Yeah. Moses was not there when God created the heavens and the earth. But when he said, show me your glory, he hid him in the rock, in the cleft of the rock. And immediately downloaded everything into his heart. So he could write, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, you will see my back and you will know what I've done in the past so that you can assess what I'm doing. As you sleep, before you wake up, every answer to your problems will be given to you. Yeah. Heaven will download them into your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, creative ingenuity, great, wonderful ideas businesses that others will not pay attention to, you will suddenly start them, you will finish them and they will bring huge resources to you. None of you will lack, you will eat and there will be plenty left over. This is your year of turnaround. It will roll your shame away for every shame is going to give you double for your trouble in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your mighty hands come upon your people. Favor them every inch of the way and every second of the day. Let one of them chase a thousand, two of them ten thousand. Let the least of them become a great nation. You have promised us that will become headquarters of wealth. This is the season, Father. This is the time we have been waiting for. Thank you for answers coming from your presence. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. And the people said, Amen. Now open your hearts unto the spirit of the living God. Let your heart be wide open. Lord, deep calls unto deep. Let this be a spirit to spirit transaction. We receive that unction now. That grace to speak to the heart of God into the hearts of men. In Jesus' name, there will be no lack in your households. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no lack in your businesses. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no lack in our ministry. Yeah. We will eat. We will have among us left over. Yeah. For the benefit of others, in the name of Jesus. From this day forward, may generosity dominate every area of your life. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Once again, happy, productive, and prosperous new year to you. Thanks for listening. God bless you.